you ask me, I think the most interesting platforming characters, they're usually the ones that have some sort of utility in their design. Chameleon Twist on N64 is a pretty cool example. Everything revolves around using your tongue as a grappling hook. But while it is a pretty fun mechanic, the games are so freaking short that they're both pretty much over before they can do anything special with it. I would usually end videos about that sort of thing with like this optimistic ramble about the potential of the idea, like, uh, oh, how cool it would be if somebody today took that mechanic and gave it another stab sort of thing. Well, after enough years have gone by, I managed to find exactly that. A new game that takes that very same tongue grappling mechanic, but turns it into something genuinely special. It is probably the single most underrated and underloved indie platformer I have ever played. I was just clicking through the more like this section on the PlayStation Store over and over. Uh, I like looking for obscure stuff this way. And eventually I find this adorable looking platformer that I've never heard of called Super Sammy Roll. And it's by this super recent and really small Japanese studio called Sanzai Games. And yeah, the mechanics look sound and the price tag was solid. So I figured, eh, what the hell? Why don't we give it a shot and see if it's any good? Little did I know, I was about to play one of the funnest 3D platformers I've ever found. The first thing you see in this thing is just this ridiculously cool anime intro. For a game from a pretty small studio, the production value here is quite good. Sammy Roll further mixes media with this old NES-styled intro. Sammy and his friend Vera are chilling on the beach when this dickhead rich monkey man decides to add to his collection of exotic creatures and stolen relics. He jumps in his Eggman robo thing and kidnaps Vera, leaving Sammy on a quest to rescue his funny beach buddy. <laughs> That's a really good face. And just like that, we are dropped into the first level. I, I mean, it is kind of hardly a level. It's the equivalent if 1-1 one, one started you here. You just go up to the owl and the whole thing's over. But it is a little bit more thought out than it does initially seem. So, you know, you can go around like normal, just rolling along and hopping up and around. Or you can use a ball bounce move to skip the whole thing, go right here. Or maybe the first thing you wanted to try is that tongue grapple. The first level in the game and immediately the player can already begin playing the way they want. So why don't we talk a little bit more about those three moves because that's all we're working with here that is all we have just a wall jump a slam and a grapple first off the slam feels awesome like the physics on the character feel fantastic as it is but when you're speeding through and you feel every bit of velocity transition from your existing movement into that bounce or maybe you hit an angle just right and you get a lot of distance or maybe you fling yourself right off the freaking stage because it does take a little bit of practice bouncing moves have always been one of my favorites it's uh, a really big reason why i still play sonic adventure 2 like borderline religiously. <laughs> uh, not only is it a really fun way to quickly gain some height, but it will also immediately change your character's direction to straight downward, making it really useful for quickly interacting with anything below you, like getting onto a rail faster or connecting with a spring more quickly. It's the kind of move that allows you to skillfully hang on to that forward momentum. The better you get at the game, the more you'll be able to use that move to optimize your route through the level. You can expect to do that sort of thing in this game too. It's not just for gaining height or distance, but also for optimizing your motion in general. Like landing on a speed pad faster, or maybe you'll connect with a bounce pad more quickly. Anything you can do to shave a couple of seconds off of that airtime. Now while I do love the absolute crap out of the bounce move, the tongue grapple is undeniably the real star of the show here. At first, it seems pretty simple. You know, you just press the button and Sammy's tongue extends out in a straight line. You can't, like, control it in a circle or aim it or anything like that. It's just the direction you're facing. And then when it connects with a wall or an obstacle or something, Sammy will then quickly reel himself towards it. If you reel yourself into a wall, Sammy then enters this sliding animation, which you can then wall jump out of. And it's a really good feeling wall jump. There's so many obstacles that have these really fun back and forths between the grapple and the wall jump. Now what makes this tongue grapple really interesting is that you can actually jump out of that reeling animation. Even if you're only in it briefly, as long as the tongue did connect to the obstacle, you can pop up out of it. And from there, you can use the airtime to continue grappling even more. The chains you can pull off in this game are just freaking incredible. Like seriously, dude, like holy shit can you do some tricky ass nonsense in this game. Grapples to jumps to wall jumps to more grapples. 
I might be making it look a little bit easy here because I'm, I'm only showing footage of like successful runs right now, but it is actually really challenging to do. You're not just going to be creaming every level with ease or anything. It is a little bit tricky to get the hang of. I died a lot of times trying to master it, but the muscle memory does eventually kick in. Before you know it, you will be making the inputs you need. A lot of rolling your thumb over these two buttons here, and from then on, it's really just all about the timing. Which also isn't that hard to read either, thanks to this little arrow here. This thing only appears if pressing the button is going to have your tongue connect to a wall. If this thing is on screen when you hit that button, you're good. It is such a small, tiny little detail, but buddy, it is incredibly helpful in getting the timing right and landing all of those successful grapples, especially when you're grappling really tiny surfaces. Oh man, like, d dude, like connecting to something and hopping over it and chaining it all together, this game is immensely satisfying. Like, I really can't stress enough how freaking fun this is. Like, it does look like some little doo-doo baby-ass platform game, but no, no, no. No, no, the mechanics here are out of this world, dude. It is totally comparable to the feeling of getting better at stuff like, like Mario 64 or Demon Turf or Celeste or Meat Boy. It is very much that kind of movement-focused platformer. Alright, well, I, I guess we got the first half of an amazing platformer, an inventive moveset with engaging mechanisms that controls very well and has fantastic character physics. Knocking it out of the freaking park so far, man! The other half, of course, is good level design, and I'm happy to say that Sammy Roll excels at that as well. It really feels like the game designers here have been playing video games their entire lives. Obstacles will teach you how to interact with them without a single word on screen or any tutorials at all, just by arranging them in foolproof or safer situations before gradually ramping them up and posing them in more challenging and dangerous scenarios. Super Salami Roll is just freaking riddled with all of those seamless show-don't-tell teachings that you would expect from an all-time classic Nintendo or Capcom game, modern or retro. It's an ideology that's been around since the frickin' 80s, and I still see modern games today kinda struggle to figure this out. Sammy Roll gets it though. These guys get it. There's a huge array of obstacles here that take advantage of Sammy's bouncy and rolly and grappling nature. Spring pads, speed boosters, poles that you can grapple onto and swing out of. You can even fully control how you exit this thing too, uh, depending on the angle Sammy's at when you jump out of it. Water levels float up and down, revealing platforms that you have to hot foot through before they submerge once more. Platforms that vanish and materialize on a timer. Platforms that rotate and shift. Balloons you could bounce off of, or whirlwinds that'll float you upward. Windstorms have you grappling on for dear life. Lightning strikes electrify the footing into these deadly platforms. And they even have like the whole Dark Rayman, Cosmic Mario, Chaser Guy thingies where uh, these flames copy all of your movements and you gotta speed through the level as they chase you. Every piece of level design here speaks to a thorough understanding of how to make a fun and polished platformer. Even down to the little details like making walls you're likely to wall jump off of see through in some way, so you can still see your guy on the other side as you do it. The moveset here is so unbelievably simple, there's barely anything to it, yet the level design has you reacting in a huge variety of ways. There's so much room for optimization too, tons of different ways you could navigate any given level. I would start to look for all of these little skips, soaring over chunks of the level and feeling like a platforming master. And sometimes I would see a potential major skip, a, a potential one, just one little detail that, oh, I know that's going to allow me to demolish the level in like two seconds if I, if I can just get it right. Come on, come on. No, this, this has to be possible. You can totally do this. I just, I just, I just got to get it right. Trying again and again to master each part of the level as the music practically cheers you on saying, maybe this time, no, no, maybe this time, no, this time. And that is how I know this is an amazing platforming game because when you have beaten a level, you immediately try it again because there's more ways to do this. There's better ways to do this. And I want to find them. And hey, what do you know? It was possible. Yes, I knew it! God, dude, like, I don't know how people aren't already speedrunning the crap out of this game. And the way they handle the enemies here is also pretty interesting. They're more like these non-lethal hazards than they are like bad guys, because they can't kill you, but bumping into one will hinder you. It'll pop you up into the air, giving you this, this long animation that you have to wait for that could, you know, waste some time at best, but could knock you off of the world at worst. 
And in this game, losing time is something you don't really want. You only get so much. You will have to be as speedy as you can. It's a system that lends itself a little bit better to a game about movement and speed because you want to be able to use those moves to save yourself. Keep the run going strong, even when playing through your mistakes. This sort of thing allows for those moments to happen. It's the sort of thing that you wouldn't really get from just ticking away a health point or having you simply restart the level on contact. But the coolest thing about the enemies might just be the fact that you can also grapple them too! It's risky because you can get hit if you pull yourself all the way into them, but you can pop out of it it just the same as you can with any other surface. It's so freaking cool. If I'm making the gameplay sound a little bit intimidating with all those wacky maneuvers and the time limit and stuff, uh, don't worry too hard because the way they handle difficulty options in this game is really freaking clever. Instead of like an easy and hard mode that just cheaply modifies the intended game design, they have a relaxed and advanced option. In relaxed mode, you don't have to worry about the time limit. You can take as much time as you want and there will be checkpoints throughout the level. Normal mode will keep the checkpoints but adds a time limit. You'll have to grab as many coins as you possibly possibly can to keep the timer up, each one adding a single second to the clock. It sounds kind of annoying, but trust me, it super duper adds to the scramble of getting through. And it gives the coins actual value as well, so you're totally incentivized to work in maneuvers that'll go through as many lines of coins as you can, choosing pathways that'll take advantage of like them moving against you so you get more faster. It just gives you a lot more to consider when you're going through the level. Now the advanced difficulty doesn't change anything to the timer at all, but it does remove all checkpoints. So the only real difference is that you gotta beat the entire level in one go. This is the way I like to play. The levels aren't really all that long. They usually last anywhere from like, I don't know, 15 seconds to maybe just over a minute. So to me, it's all about practicing the run until you nail it. And I always will have tons and tons and tons of failed attempts leading up until that. But the game is so fast about getting you back on the horse, they do not waste any time between attempts. Restarting via the pause menu is lightning fast too. I mean, for, look at that. You're in, you're out, you're going. So you, you see what they did with the difficulty here. They created these different modes that completely preserve all of the handcrafted level design. It doesn't change a single obstacle or enemy or anything like that. It only changes the pace at which the player is allowed to take. Now, that said, there was this one level that I did have quite a hard time with. You gotta go through this long, super thin icy track, and it's totally doable. Like, I could do it many, many times, but doing all of them in one long take without failure, I was just starting to find that annoying. It's not like the level was like impossible or anything, it's just that I just needed a change of pace. So I pop open that pause screen, flip that over, and boom, I can play just this one level with checkpoints. Give myself a break. And they didn't even like penalize me for it either. It's just like, yep, sorry guys, not having a good time with this one, just, uh, just give me the checkpoints and make it go away faster. You gotta love a game that makes it pretty easy to play the way you want, especially in both the gameplay and the options. They also freaking nail it in the presentation department too. Like, everything about the way this thing looks and sounds is just delightful. Sammy's model is just adorable. Like, look at this little guy. Choo! Choo! He's a choo-choo train. Dude, all of the enemies are lovable as hell. You got pylons with little feet walking around the highways. These Street Fighter Ninja Turtles firing Hadoukens at you. You got spooky little mummies popping out of the sand and punky penguins busting out of snowmen and bonking off the level. Look at this little kitty cat UFO. Is that like not the cutest shit you've ever seen? Everything here just harnesses that wholesome Japanese-y cuteness unbelievably well. And man, these levels have a lot of personality for something that's just a bunch of floating platforms and blocks. They manage to make it all charming as hell, man. But more importantly, the visuals also make it really easy to understand and read the environment. Platforms will have defined middles and edges. Areas that are safe from shifting tides have a unique border. Blocks carry unique designs to hint that a, a bounce could work well there. It all carries every bit of cuteness and utility that usually requires people like, like the geniuses behind behind Super Mario to figure out. And I freaking love the map screens. They all go full on NES. They even make each part of the map look like the levels, so it's always really easy to remember which one was which. But my favorite feature of the map is easily the shop. You can use all of those hidden raspberries you've been finding in each level to buy these costumes for Sammy. You can mix and match tons of different accessories and colors to fully customize the little guy. I love that little 8-bit preview you see before you actually enter a level with it. That's just an incredible touch. 
Cosmetics aren't the only thing you're going to be buying though. You can also use your coins to buy handy dandy stuff that'll help you out, like, uh, like a compass that'll show you where one of the raspberries are, or hints that'll help you find those secret stages. Oh, it had me flashing back to finding all those hidden exits in Super Mario World. Some levels are going to have these hidden golden owls, and if you find it, you'll unlock an extra challenging secret level. And you know, some of these levels can totally eat my ass because the precision you need in some of them can be kind of demanding, but hey, you know, it, it wasn't any thing I couldn't tough through with enough tries, like the tight controls do at least make it something that you can totally learn and overcome, and while I was yelling at the TV a lot sometimes in these levels, I was still having a pretty solid time getting better and better until I finally had it. It's just the sort of thing that's really meant to test your abilities, you know, uh, kind of like a much more challenging version of that uh, final 3D Mario secret level, and considering that the game is so focused on these mechanics and the player's ability to use them, I do appreciate appreciate them putting in these optional stages that can really push you to do that. Super Sammy Roll isn't just a fantastic platformer, but the result of smart and passionate developers that have played great games all their life and sought to understand what exactly makes character movement fun. It is one of the most engaging platformers I've played in my life, and it'll stick with me forever as a classic, just the same as the games that inspired it currently do. When it comes to platformers that are just 100% focused on raw gameplay, Super Sammy Roll is top of the freaking line, dude. Like, honestly, if I could, I would be giving this game, like, an award or something for, like, the outstanding achievement in 3D platforming. Like, seriously, the developers here are very clearly incredibly passionate about the craft of game design. And, buddy, they managed to make something fun as fuck. Sanzai Games is gonna be a name I remember, and anything else they work at, I'm gonna have my eye on it, that's for sure. Currently, they're helping make this game for their publisher called Bat Boy. They're not like the main developer behind it, but hey, it looks like Mega Man, it looks like Shovel Knight, looks like my kind of jam, so I might just check that out too. But for the time being, I really, really recommend you check out Super Sam Raimi, Su Su Super Sammy Roll. Anyway, it's on all major platforms, PS4 and 5, both Xboxes, or all X whatever Xboxes, and Nintendo Switch too. Uh, I played it on PS5 to assure the best frame rate, you know, it, it is that kind of game after all, but... Oh wow, I, I think that was kind of overkill. This version can do 120 FPS. So I guess it really wasn't a huge surprise when me and Brady tried out the Switch version and we saw that, yeah, this also runs at a super solid 60 FPS. You know, like the resolution isn't quite as clean and the load times are a tad longer, but the performance is solid. So I can totally recommend the Switch version to anybody that does prefer it. And I really do hope you'll play it because when I first found it, it had barely any reviews on Steam and searching it on YouTube yielded very little results. And that's a damn crime. Like, the human race should be in jail for ignoring this thing. And it's not even very expensive either. It's like dirt freaking cheap for how good this thing is. It is a genuinely amazing platformer. And I was very impressed by it. Been finding that a lot with indies these days, but you know, I guess that does make sense. Like, if anybody's going to understand 3D platformers the most, it's probably the people that grew up playing them, you know, like the people that grew to really love the genre as a kid, but then would keep trying to understand those conversations between the characters and the levels as they continued playing these games into their adulthood. Once you truly understand that, then, and only then, do you get to make something this special. I swear to God, I do I do not know why I keep calling this game Super Sam Raimi Roll by accident. That wasn't just a mistake in this video. Like, as long as I've been playing this game, when I try to bring this game up, I will accidentally call it that. And I can't even, I can't believe that came out of my mouth when I was recording this, when the words were in front of me on the page. <laughs>